The Nico rig or Neko rig has become one of the deadliest finesse techniques to catch bass in the world. Gosh. Get out of there. Get out of there. He's out. I can't believe that fish was that shallow. I literally was about to skip that dock. It's a good one too. Sometimes you can't get too shallow. Look at that. Beautiful. Alright. Oh, that about fell in the water. Alright, that's number one. Number one on the Nico. You can fish it shallow, you can fish it deep, you can fish it in open water, and you can fish it in cover. And today I wanna to go through Nico Rigging 101 so you know exactly how to rig this bait and when to where to fish it. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by SportsmansOutfitters.com. At Sportsman's Outfitters, you can get fishing, hunting, and all your outdoor needs at some great prices. If you would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel and help me bring more content like this to you, you can click those links down below in the description and pick up some gear today. Now, when I say the Nico rig is one of the deadliest finesse techniques to catch a bass, I really mean this. And in a lot of situations, it has replaced a wacky rig. In other situations, it's even replaced a drop shot. Now, I'm not saying that it's always going to catch fish better than those other finesse techniques, but if you fish a lake that is highly pressured or a lake that everybody fishes wacky worms or everybody fishes drop shots, a Nico rig is a great tool that you can use to catch bass that nobody else can. Now, not only is a Nico rig effective at catching bass, but it is also extremely easy to set up. So let's go ahead and rig up this bait and then talk about when and where to fish it. Now, this is a finesse technique, so I fish it on a spinning rod. I like this seven foot, one inch, medium power, fast action rod, and I will use 10 pound braided line to an eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now, although I do suggest braid to a fluorocarbon leader, if you have just straight fluorocarbon or just straight monofilament on your spinning reel, that's going to work. I do suggest an eight or 10 pound test. I typically use eight pound tests when I am not fishing it around cover. I will bump it up to 10 pound tests when I am fishing around cover like docks or stumps. Now, the worm that you're going to use for this technique is a straight tailed worm. There's a lot of companies that make straight tailed worms on the market. One of my favorites though is the Robo Worm. Now probably my number one color that I use on a Nico rig is this purplish color which is called Margarita Mutilator. About 95% of the time I am fishing this technique that is the worm that I am going to choose. I also really like this pinkish morning dawn color. I fish this a lot in really clear water. Now to rig a Nico rig the first thing that I'm going to do is put an o-ring on that worm. You can do this with a simple o-ring tool. I will link all this equipment down below. Simply slip the o-ring onto the small side of that tool and work it towards the fat end. Then you're going to place your worm inside the tube and then pop the o-ring off onto the worm. Now you could probably fish this technique without an o-ring, but you are going to go through a lot of worms. And I like that o-ring because it helps me to hook that hook vertically, which we'll talk about in just a minute. After I slip on the o-ring, I'm going to take a Nico weight or nail weight and I'm going to shove it in the fat end of the worm. Now that my worm is set up, I'm going to tie a Nico hook onto my fishing line. Now, I really like to use a double Pitson knot with my fluorocarbon. And since you're just tying on a bare hook, a quick tip, put a pair of scissors on that hook so that you can swing that hook around to tie the knot. Now, the next step, which is really important, is hooking that hook into the worm. When you place the hook into the worm, you want the hook point to be on the same side of the O-ring as the tail end of the bait or the pointed end of the worm. This bait is going to come across the bottom just like this. And having that hook point facing upward is going to make that bait a lot more weedless. That way you can work it around hard cover like stumps. Now, some people will say put the hook point up because it will help hook that fish in the roof of the mouth 
With a Nico rig, that's just not true. You never know how that bass is going to suck that bait in. So you might still hook a fish in the bottom of the jaw, but as long as you're hooking the fish and putting them in the boat, that's what's important. Now the Nico hook that I am using is made by VMC. It has these little monofilament weed guards, which just help it to come through cover like stumps. But if you're fishing in more open water situations, you don't necessarily need a hook that has these little weed guards. So now your Nico rig is completely ready to go. So let's talk about when and where to fish this bait. Now, as far as when to fish this bait, this is not a lure that you are going to locate bass with. And what I mean by that is that it is not an effective search tool to find bass. This is more of a lure that I use when I know bass are in an area. And the biggest reason being is that this is a very slow technique. You do not want to overwork this bait. It's really about casting it out and working it extremely slow across the bottom. So if you're working a bait really slow, it just doesn't allow you to go out there and find bass with it really quick. Now I use this bait a lot as what I call a cleanup bait. So if I find an offshore school of bass and I'm catching them on a deep diving crankbait or a football jig or a Carolina rig, after I catch fish on those lures and the fish stop biting, that is when I pick up the Nico rig and fire it out there and usually you can catch a couple more bass that didn't want to bite those other lures. Now another huge situation where I fish that Nico rig is in highly pressured bodies of water. I'm from Ohio, okay? All of our lakes have a ton of pressure. I'm sure that in your region of the country, you also fish some very pressured lakes. So say there is a bank or a row of docks that is always holding fish on your local lake or river or pond, a lot of guys might pick up a Texas rig or a jig to fish in that area. Area. So if you pick up that Nico rig and work it really, really slow, you're going to be able to pick up bass that those guys miss because those fish have seen a lot of those other techniques and they haven't seen as many of those Nico rigs. So in highly pressured bodies of water, a Nico rig is a must. Now, as far as where I like to fish this technique, you can really fish a Nico rig anywhere. But the thing is, is it's not a great lure for heavy vegetation situations. You know, I've got some lily pads here behind me and there's no doubt that the bass would eat this bait in those pads, but it can be very difficult to get that bait in and out of pads without it hanging up. And if you're fishing a really thick grass line, maybe this is milfoil or hydrilla, again, this is not a situation where I am usually going to fish a Nico rig, unless those bass are kind of on the outside of that grass and more of a clearing. Now, a couple of places that I really like to fish this technique is up underneath docks. The great thing about a Nico rig, especially if you're using that fat robo worm, is that it will skip extremely well. It will skip just like a wacky rig because it's basically a wacky rig. Now, another one of my favorite areas to fish this bait is on offshore rock piles. Because a Nico rig is typically really light, I'm usually using like a 332nd, maybe a 1 16th ounce weight. It will really come through a rock pile well without getting hung up. Now, another place that I like to fish the Nico rig is around wood cover. But the biggest thing is you don't want to fish it around really branchy or sticky wood cover. If you have a stump or if you have a lay down that is not real branchy, that Nico will come through that cover pretty easily. Now, the biggest thing with this technique is not to overwork it. You do not want to sit there and really pop your rod. I more or less cast this bait out and I'm going to kind of drag it and slowly kind of pop it like this while it's down there on the bottom. It's going to have a lot of action the way that this bait sits on the bottom. You do not need to give it a lot of action. So I really like to work this bait extremely slow. I really feel like the slower you work it, the more bad that you catch. Now, another one of my favorite finesse techniques is a drop shot. And in this video right here, I talk about the big mistakes that a lot of anglers make with a drop shot. So if you like hearing more about finesse tactics and techniques, I think you'll enjoy this video. Please don't forget to comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.